Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you are doing all right and thank you so much for joining me today in another quilt along episode. So today we're gonna make this lovely tulips and pinwheel quilt behind me. This is such an adorable quilt and a great stash busting project. The finished measurements of this quilt is approximately 58 and a half inch by 58 and a half inch so it's a square quilt and for the fabric you will need approximately 10 fat quarters three dark three medium and four light color you will also need some background fabric i use this off-white color and you will need about one and three quarter yard for this quilt we'll be working with two different blocks so we've got the tulip block and the pinwheel block Obviously, pinwheel block, I think, is something that we are already very familiar with. And the tulip block also is relatively simple. It's not too complicated. If you've already mastered the half square triangles, this will come relatively easy. We enjoy this video, and without further ado, let's get started. For each unit of the tulip block, you will need seven pieces of fabrics. For fabric one and two, you will need to cut from the dark or medium fabric. And then for fabric 3, 4, and 5, you will need to cut from the lighter fabric. For fabric 6, you will need to cut from your background fabric. And for fabric 7, you will need to cut from medium or dark fabric, something that is contrasting with fabric 1 and 2. So for fabric 1 up to fabric 6, you will need to cut 4 pieces for each. While for fabric 7, you will need to cut 5 pieces. First, we're going to make the half square triangle units. So take a fabric one and fabric three, and then you want to lay them right side together, just like that. And then you want to take your ruler and lay that on diagonal angle, and then go ahead and draw the diagonal line. You can either use a fabric marker, pencil, or pen. Once you've done that, go ahead and sew quarter of an inch away from the diagonal line on both sides. Now I'm going to pop a couple of pins to secure them in place. I'm sewing with my quarter inch foot, so I simply align the edges of my presser foot with the diagonal line. And once you've done sewing, you want to cut the diagonal line and you should end up with two half square triangles. Set the seams and then press towards the darker fabric. And then you can go ahead and make six more half square triangles. So once you've sewn all of the four and a half inch squares together or the fabric one and three together, you should end up with eight half square triangles. Next, we're going to trim this half square triangle to measure three and a half inch squares. So here I've got my square ruler. So you want to align the diagonal line of your ruler with the diagonal line of the half square triangle. And then find the three and a half inch point. Now what I like to do though for the first cut, I like to measure a slight bigger than the measurements that I'm looking for. As you can see here, I'm aligning my ruler at three and three quarter of an inch point. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim with my rotary cutter. Now I'm going to flip this to the opposite side. Again, aligning the diagonal line of the ruler with the diagonal line of the half square triangle. And this time I'm going to measure exactly at three and a half inch point and then trim. So now my half square triangle is measuring exactly three and a half inch squares. So you want to go ahead and do the same with the rest of your half square triangles unit. To make the tulip unit, you want to lay out your fabric pieces just like shown here. Now I'm going to go ahead and start sewing, starting from fabric 2 with the half square triangle. And of course, we're going to use quarter inch of seam allowance throughout the piecing. Now press the seams towards fabric 2 or away from the half square triangle. Next, we're going to sew fabric 5 and fabric 7. 
and then press towards fabric 7 and then we're going to sew these two together and then press towards fabric 4 next we're going to sew these two together and then press the seams away from the half square triangle next we're going to sew the upper and the lower rows together so you should be able to nest the seams at this point if you want to you can pin right on the seams just to make sure they're not shifting now to press the seams what i like to do i will unpick the top stitches down to the quarter inch point or where the inner section is and then i'm going to open this up and with my finger i'm going to push one seams up and then the other seams down and then press the wrong side just to keep everything in place for now and then press the right side so i like to gently push the seams and make sure everything is nice and flat there so your tulip unit should now measure six and a half inch squares now go ahead and make three more of these so you should end up with four tulip units to assemble the block you want to arrange your tulip units with fabric six and the one piece left from fabric seven just like shown on the screen right now We're going to assemble this block one row at a time so i'm going to start with this first tulip unit with fabric six and then i'm going to press the seams towards fabric six i know it may be scary for some people because i'm pressing the seams towards the light fabric however i kind of prefer less bulk and i really never had a problem with it now i'm going to sew the second tulip and then press towards fabric six so we're basically going to press everything towards fabric six or the background fabric throughout the piecing of the block Now we're gonna sew the first and the second row together so you should be able to nest the seams and i like to pop a couple of pins just to secure the seams together and then press towards the second row Alright, so here we've got our first tulip block ready. And this block should measure 14 inches squares. So you want to go ahead and make 7 more blocks, which means you will have 8 tulip blocks. Now we're going to work on the pinwheel block. So for this block, you will need 2 rectangles, um, contrasting color, so you can either use medium with light or dark with light, and some background fabric as well. So you want to make four half square triangles exactly the same way um, when we did the tulip blocks. So you want to take fabric one and two, lay them right side together, draw a diagonal line and then stitch a quarter of an inch away on both sides of the diagonal line. Then square them up to measure three and a half inch squares. Now lay out the half square triangles to make the pinwheel block just like shown on the screen right now.
Now go ahead and sew them together. So I like to start from the upper row. If you pressed all of your half square triangles towards the darker fabric, you should be able to nest the seams. So you want to start sewing from the opposite of the seams. It's just much easier that way. So you want to press the seams of each row towards opposite directions. This way it's easier later to nest the seams. Now sew the rows together. You should be able to nest the seams since we press the seams towards opposite sides. I'm going to press this the same way as I did the tulip unit. So I'm going to unpick few stitches from the top down to where the inner section is, so about a quarter of an inch. And then push one seam up and one seam down. You may not be able to see it clearly here, but there should be a miniature pinwheel right on the center. Now we're going to lay out fabric 3 and fabric 4. So we're going to start by sewing fabric 3 and then press towards fabric 3. Alright, so our pinwheel block is done. So you want to make 8 of these. Now lay out your quilt block by alternating the tulip block with the pinwheel block. So you want to arrange your block in 4 rows and 4 columns, just like shown here. And once you're happy with the layout of your quilt blocks, go ahead and start piecing them together. So here I've already grouped my quilt blocks according to each row and I label them from the first up to the fourth row and then sew my quilt block one row at a time. Once you have pieced all of your quilt blocks together, it's time to add the borders. So for this quilt, I use two and a half inch border. However, you can make wider border if you prefer. That's gonna enlarge the size of your quilt. When I sew my border, I like to pin from the center, so I am matching the center point of my border with the center point of the quilt top, and I also pin both the side edges. Then sew with quarter inch of seam allowance, and um, when pressing this, I press the seams towards the border. And when you sew the border, you want to sew from the shorter border, attach that to the top and the bottom of the quilt, and then sew the longer border to the sides of the quilt. Once you've sewn the border together and your quilt top is ready to go, go ahead and sandwich your quilt top with the quilt batting and the backing fabric, and then quilt as you desired. So you can do free motion quilting, walking foot quilting, or hand quilting. For this quilt, I did free motion quilting. I don't consider myself much of an expert in free motion quilting, but I do enjoy doing it for my own quilt, simply having fun with it. All right, once you've done quilting, go ahead and add the binding. Use your favorite binding method. If you make your own binding, you will need about six binding strips um, for these measurements. And that's all I have for you today guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time with another fun sewing and quilting projects. Goodbye!